How do I say this? Uh, the entire Bible is about black people. Um, not only was Jesus black, but every character in the Bible seems to be black too. Yeah, Zephaniah and Jeremiah and Jebediah, those, those all aren't white people names, okay? Um, and Jesus wasn't some tan, partially melanated Middle Eastern person either. I'm talking straight up black dude, okay? Even in the book of Revelation, when you get the vision of Daniel, he's describing someone with feet like burnt brass and white woolly hair, and we've got the deep running water voice with the, the red eyes, and uh, you guys, he's black. The Jewish people are black people, like Kanye was right. And those people yelling at the park dressed in purple about black people being the real Hebrew Israelites, they're right, okay? Like, any time you see the word Hebrew or Israelite or Jew in the Bible, in your mind, you got to replace that with black person. So, the whole Bible is going to make a lot more sense to you once you start reading it like that. But, um, you need to let this uh, get settled in your heart now before you get up there. So, um, I mean, they were literally whipping him on his way to get crucified, you guys. Crucifixion was a punishment, like, for slaves back then, all and, and gladiators, and all the gladiators were black too, did you know that? Like, you guys, he was sold for 30 pieces of silver, that was the maximum amount of money that a slave could be sold for, oh, just coincidence? Um, uh, above his cross, it says, I-N-R-I, -I. they were like mocking him, they were saying, he it was it says the king of the, this is the king of the jews they're saying like here's the king of the black people look what we did to him why does the kkk burn crosses you guys the racist kkk it it's just the black people rejoice you are god's chosen people like i mean those are some big shoes to fill but be honored like feel good about that like how cool Anyway, see you later. Jesus was black. Shalom Israel, giving honor and praise to the Most High God for the reading and the understanding of his word and family. I want to wish every king, every queen, every prince, and every princess, I want to wish you a wonderful, magnificent Sabbath. And once again, thank you for bringing this in with your brother this week and family, family, family. I just want to go ahead and get this off of my chest right now. This will be the definitive lesson on whether or not if the other nations are able to get into our kingdom. Why? But why? Because there is this lie that is known as spiritual Israel. And we, about, we are going to put an end to that nonsense tonight. That is one of the doctrines that are out there that has our people, our very own people believe in that the other nations are able to get into our kingdom. It is a bold-faced lie. We're going to prove it here tonight. So family, I don't want anyone just listening to the sound of my voice. I want your Bibles opened. I want your Bibles open and I want you reading along with me so that you can number one, verify that everything that I am saying is 100% accurate. You have to make sure that you do that so that somebody doesn't try to play you. Then you also have to make sure that that person is also reading precepts. You got to make sure that don't you ever listen to anyone that does not bring a precept with their scriptures. I'm trying to tell you because the Bible will always back up what it has to say. Always. Always. Okay. So now that we have that understanding, I want to make this statement very clear. Only the Israelites will have the kingdom. Only the Israelites will have the kingdom. Will the Israelites be the only people inside of the kingdom? No. Will 
it only be Israel inside the gates. Yes. Y'all got to understand that. Inside of the gates, inside of the 12 gates, inside of New Jerusalem, there will be no one else other than Israel that is able to get inside of those gates. Now, there is still an entire world outside. There is an entire world that lives outside of the gates. It's the rest of the planet. That's what y'all have to understand. So what is going to be happening for the rest of the planet? The Israelites will own everything. And the other nations will be your slaves. They have to have somewhere to live. They have to have some place to work. How are they going to work for you? They're your slaves. So they have to have places, right? Yes. But it does not mean that they're in the kingdom. And as a matter of fact, before we even jump fully into the entire lesson, I want to, I, I, I want to make sure that I present this right out the gate. And even after I present these particular scriptures, we can go ahead and just end it right there. But of course, we're not going to do that because I want to have some fun here tonight. So family, the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to see who's not allowed in the kingdom in the first place. We're going to see who's not getting in just out the gate, who will not see the kingdom of God. Okay. First and foremost, we're going to start with the Chinese and the Japanese. So please open your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 23. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 23, please. And we will be in Deuteronomy here tonight, but I want you to go down to verse three. And I'm going to read this here so that you can see and hear. Watch this. And Ammonite, the Japanese, or Moabite, the Chinese, shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord, even to their tenth, even to their tenth. Tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Forever means forever. <laughs> they're not getting in. It just told you right there they're not getting in. Forever. Because you will have someone that will sit there and be like, oh, that, that was old. That was old. The most I said, not even to their tenth generation. Then he goes on to say forever. He's, they're never getting in. That eliminates two people right there. So the lie is already busted already. But of course, that's not it. Now we have to go to Esau. So please go to the book of Obadiah. And for those who are unfamiliar, Obadiah is one chapter. Esau is referring to Caucasians slash Edomites slash Idumeans slash white people. Okay. That's who they are. That is their recognition. That is their identification in the scriptures. Whenever you see Edomites is referring to white people. Okay. So now we are in the book of Obadiah chapter one, verse one. Watch this. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Stop. Because now the Most High is beginning to read the characteristics of these individuals. The Father said, and we talked about this a couple of uh, weeks ago. Well, no, a couple of months ago with the Candace Owens lesson. Remember that one? The truth about slavery. If you haven't seen that one, go back, go back and look at that one if you haven't seen it. But this right here is talking about the people. Remember, in that lesson, we talked about the base people, the base people, the one that was smaller than everybody else. That's white people, according to the Bible. The father said he made them the base people at the very, very bottom, the bottom of everybody. But because the Israelites, because we continued to break the most high God's commandments, he took the people that was on the bottom and put them on top. It took the people that was on top and put them on bottom. That's what happened. According to the Bible, that's what happened. Okay, let's continue. 
The pride of thine heart have deceived thee because they're very prideful people. And they truly, truly believe that they are able to get into the kingdom. They believe that God loves them. And now, as we already know, according to Romans chapter 9 and also Malachi, that the father said he hates Esau. He hates them. Now, there's too many lessons that we have for us to go back and look at that all together. OK, go look at the lessons. Just go through the library and look. OK, there's too many lessons there. They're there. Verse uh, three, I'm going to start reading again. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock. We know that's Esau because they are mountain people. Whose habitation is high that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? You see that? So now this is talking about their high rises and things of that nature. They always love living in high estates. They always have. They love this so much that they were even trying to go straight up. Straight up to the heavens. Ooh, just wait. Just wait. Until <laughs> what we read later. Let's continue. Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle. We talked about that Sunday night. And though thou set thy nest among the stars, then will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Now, we know about their space program and NASA and all of that stuff. The Bible says that they're out there. The Bible says that they are out of space. For all the people that love sitting there talking about, oh, they never went out of space. Well, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that they set their nest up there. The Bible, the God of creation said that, not me. The God of creation said that they're out there. So your little measly, little piddly opinion doesn't matter. It means nothing compared to what the God of Israel said. Let's continue. Verse five. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? Now, y'all got to understand what this is saying here. It's saying that when Esau pillages, when they come to rob and steal, they take every damn thing. And that is just their characteristic. When they go to a land, they exhume all the resources. They leave nothing. Watch this. Verse six. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are the hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. That should be they that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. That's letting you know all about that white man. How they came straight here, right here to America and made friends with who the world loved to call Indians. But they're not. They're Israelites took their land and everything took their land, pillaged everything, killed them, killed them, killed them with disease on blankets, wiped them out altogether, then took all their resources. You can't lie about this Bible. This Bible tells you all about history. It tells you all about history and who did what. <laughs> you can't deny it because their pride led to their identification because everything that they did, they put in history books. So all we have to do is go back and look at the history books and then just align it right where the scripture said. And we have all of the confirmation that we need. The most high is wonderful. Let's continue. Verse eight. Shall I not in that day, in that day, in that day, in that day, in that day. Remember that because that is going to come up a lot tonight. In that day, I'm planting a seed. Y'all know how I do. Shall I not in that day, say if the Lord even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau. So now the father's talking about he getting ready to kill him. Oh, thy mighty men. Oh, Timon shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter there it is in that day everyone all the Edomites all the Edomites are going goodbye let's continue in that should be in the day 
that thou stoodest on the other side in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was as one of them. Do you see how the Most High is saying? Showing you in the generations. When they came and got us in Jerusalem, because remember, we're the same people. All we are are regenerated. We're those very same people that were, that were running in Jerusalem. And they are the very same people that were chasing after us. And the Most High is showing you right here from the past to the future, you are the same person. The very same person. These eyes have seen Yahawashai. Your eyes have seen Yahawashai before. You just don't remember. Let's continue. Verse 12, but thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of their distress. White people have done that to us since then, all the way back then. Whenever they see our destruction, they party, they love it. They ridicule us. And the most I told them, y'all should not have done that. You shouldn't have done that to my babies. You should have washed your mouth. You should have watched your mouth because now you got to pay for everything that you've done. All of the killings, the ridicule, the behind closed doors, secret meetings. They got to pay for all of that. All of it. Watch. Let's continue. Verse 13, thou shouldest not have entered into the gates of my people in the day of their calamity. The father said, you should have kept your ass away from my people. You should have stayed away because now I got to kill you for what you've done. I'm going to start that again. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. The father said, nigga, you touch my babies. I got to kill you now. You put your hands on my babies. I got to kill you. I got to destroy you. You shouldn't have done that. You touch my treasure. You touch my babies. You touch my seed. Y'all niggas got to go. That's what the Bible says. I don't give a damn if y'all niggas get mad at that. I don't give a damn who gets upset by what this Bible says. This is prophecy. And every white person out there, if you hear me under the sound of my voice, that's your problem. Nobody had a problem when it was happening to niggas. Nobody gave a damn. There wasn't one white person that came to the defense of any black people when this was happening. What did you do? You sat there. <laughs> Y'all know how they do. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wait, hold up. Let me get in front of a camera and say something really quick. You know what? You should not have done that to black people. Hey, bring the little nigger in for me. Cut his toes off. I'm going to eat those later. Yep, that's how they are. That's how they are. Yes, it is. Too bad, nigga. You can be mad all you want to. Too damn bad. Yep, so let's go ahead and uh, read verse 14 one more time. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress you see the most high like i'm gonna kill these niggas i'm gonna kill them for the day of the lord is near upon all the heathen as thou hast done it shall be done unto thee thy reward shall return upon their own head so the most high said not only esau but all of the other nations what they did to us we will do to them and they did some horrible things. This is what they are afraid of. This is why they are trying so hard to cleave to the house of Jacob because they want to hold on to us so tight so that we can't get a good grip when we whooping that ass. Do y'all understand what's, what the Bible is actually talking about? I know many of you Christians never heard this in your lying ass Christian pastors' churches. I know you never heard it before, but I'm reading it to you. 
That's why your book should be open and reading along with what I'm saying. Because if you are trusting me, if you are trusting me just being like, oh, okay, I'm going to trust him because he's reading out of it. You are a damn fool. You are an idiot. If you do not have your Bible open, you are an idiot. So take that warning and open the damn book and read along. Verse 15. Verse 15. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen, upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. Wow. That's talking about murder. That's talking about no longer existing. <laughs> mm. So wait a second. So we read about Ammon, and we read about Moab, and we know for certain that those two will not be getting into the kingdom of God. And so now the Most High is talking about eradication for the Edomite? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just reading the Bible. I'm just reading the Bible, white people. I'm just reading what the Bible actually says. God is going to kill you, all of you. Let's continue reading. Let's continue. Let's see what it says. Verse 17, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. We've taken everything back because it all belonged to us in the first place. We're just taking it back. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire and the house of Joseph a flame and the house of Esau for stubble. So if Jacob is the fire and Esau is the stubble, that means that the house of Jacob is going to destroy Esau. Just like we have read over and over and over, it will be black people killing white people. That's what it's going to be. That's what the world will be watching. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. Let's continue. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. It's over for them. And there shall not be any remaining in the house of Esau for the Lord hath spoken it. I'm going to read that one more time. I'm going to read that one more time. I'm going to read that one more time. <laughs> y'all know I'm having fun with this, right? Of course y'all do. And there shall be, and there shall be. Is that what it says? And there shall be? No! Let's read that one more time. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. Eradication eradication they're gone the most high said he's getting rid of white people altogether off the planet you can get mad all you want to you mad at the wrong person i didn't say it the bible said it let's continue and they of the south shall possess the mount of esau and they of the plain the philistines and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. It's telling you about everything that we get ready to take over. All tribes, all tribes will have their possession of the remaining of the nations. So we already see. So for let me read the last one. Verse 21. And saviors shall come up upon Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Y'all see that? I hope you do. That's what the Bible says. So now back to what I was going to say before. All tribes will have their possession of the other nations. The ones that remain. The ones that the father said he is going to allow to live and serve as slaves. That's what the Bible says. That's what it says. It's the house of Jacob will possess all. So now we have to get some further proof that it only belongs to Israel. So we just read all of that. So now, family, I want you to go to 
Go to Joel chapter 2 and verse 27. Let's start on that road. Usually I save that for last, but I want to start this just so that we can get the terminology and I want to make sure that everyone understand what these scriptures actually say. Let's look at Joel chapter 2 and verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people, my people shall never be ashamed. Now, you got to ask this question. Why does the Bible say that? Why does the Bible say that God is the God of Israel and none else? Because it's the truth. He is the God of the Israelites, not spiritual Israel, the Israelites. And you are going to learn that this is about a seed, a people, a seed from nutsack to nutsack, as I always say. See, people, they remember that. They understand that. But I'm going to show you tonight that it is nutsack to nutsack. Okay, so let's just go ahead and continue that. So now, I want you to go to Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 11, please. The book of Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 11. And let's look at, let's see what this says. Let's just see. Watch this. Hath a nation changed their gods? Stop. Now, we just read it in Joel chapter 2, verse 27. It says that I am the Lord, your God, your God, your God, and none else. And none else. So that means that God is not the God of these other nations outside of the Israelites. So let's read that one more time. Hath a nation changed their gods? Which are yet no gods, but my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. So the Most High made this very clear. He said, hold on a second. So my people actually are so stupid that they started following the gods of the other nations and their gods aren't even real. How stupid can you be? There, right there, again, the Bible saying that the other nations, their God are their gods. You can't make this up, family. I'm reading the Bible. I'm reading the Bible, family. Now, we read that, okay? Now, let's go to uh, 2 Kings. Let's go to the book of 2 Kings. The book of 2 Kings, go to uh, chapter 17, please. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 17, go down to verse 29. The book of 2 Kings, chapter 17, verse 29. Let's see if this is in correlation to anything that we've been talking about thus far. Let's see. How be it, every nation made gods of their own. Okay, remember that precept thing that I was talking about earlier? You see, that these are precepts showing you that the Bible said the same thing over and over and over. The Bible does not need man to defend it. The Bible will defend itself. <laughs> That's why it gives us precepts. So I'm gonna read it again. How be it every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. So it's obvious according to the Bible that the Most High said that these other nations have their own gods, which are not truly gods because the one true God is the only one. The one true God is the only God. And he said, I only have one set of children and that's the children of Israel. So let's talk about that word children for a second, okay? Being that, you know, this whole spiritual Israel thing, you know, is making its rounds. Children, how are children made? <laughs> Where does a child have to come from? Huh? Where does that child have to come from? I know the answer. It has to come from a man's nutsack. Yeah, he got to skeet it out inside of a woman and then they produce a child, right? Children, this is all about seed. So, so far we've read about seed, right? And then the Most High had these chosen people that he said, these people right here, they belong to me. But you're gonna find out how they are identified. So let's just continue reading because this is so fun. Now, let's go to Psalms chapter 96 and verse 5, please. The book of Psalms 
chapter 96 and verse 5. This is the one that everybody is really familiar with. Watch this. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. And most people, they sit and say, why does it mention that, that the Lord made the heavens? Because he was the only one that's able to do that. You can't make no heaven. These other gods can make no heaven. You can't make anything. You can't make a damn thing out of what's already been created. You can't. But God does. He does. He's the only one that can. And he chose us. The God that created the molecule and everything on this earth that you see from every metal, God made it all. When you look at your phone, God made that material. The glass, God made it. He made everything. We're just holding it. We have taken the best pieces of what God made and put it together, but we didn't create anything. He did. <laughs> and most people, they don't understand that. They don't get it. Okay, so now that we read that, right? So now we got all that. All of those saying that, you know, God is not your God. And now you'll have the Christian. And they'll bring their Christianity nonsense to the table, right? And what will the Christian say? Where is that in the New Testament? Okay, I got you. Please, family, go to the book of Luke chapter 1. <laughs> I got you. Go to the book of Luke chapter 1. We're going to go down to verse 68. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. So we read through all of the rest. God saying his people, his people, his people. He kept saying my people, right? My people, my people. Let's see if that is referenced in the New Testament. The book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Let's see what it says. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Rael. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. Okay. So not the whole world, not everybody on the planet, his people. Not everybody on planet Earth. His people. Again. Okay. So it doesn't matter where we go in this book. It says it over and over and over, right? Okay. Be not, we got that. So now, we got that. Now I want you to go to 1 Kings chapter 8, please. The book of 1 Kings chapter 8. Let's go down to, go to verse 23, please. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 23. Let's see what this says. Let's just see. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above, or on earth beneath who keepest covenant and mercy with thy servants that walk before thee with all their heart. So there's a very, very serious word in there. First and foremost, it said the God of Israel. And now it says his servant. So you'll have Christianity and everybody would be like, oh, well, first and foremost, you know, all you have to do is keep God's commandments. Now we both know that Christianity don't say nothing about keeping God's commandments. As a matter of fact, Christianity says that you no longer have to keep the commandments. But that's not what the Bible says, though. But it says his servants. Is that everybody on the planet? Or is that his chosen people? Because everything that we read so far, God has his chosen people. There's this one group of people that he only deal with. And their name is Israel. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American people. So let's see. Let's just see. If servants are Israelites, let's just see. So now I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 41, please. <laughs> Can y'all tell I enjoy what I'm doing right now? Can y'all tell that I am having the best time? Because I know right now, I know there is an Edomite that is watching and I know that their soul is just burning for what you're hearing. I know, I know, I know that you have been lied to, you have been told 
that you are the greatest on earth. You have been told that you are the greatest piece of sliced apple pie. You are the good guy. You have always been told that, but this Bible says otherwise. This Bible says that you are the worst of the worst. You are the worst criminal. You are a war criminal and you're going to be destroyed. You're going to die according to the Bible for the things that you've done to us. Now, when it comes to our people, we don't have to sit there and be mean to you. No need to. Never will. As a matter of fact, we are instructed not to be. Be peaceful among all men that are upon the face of this earth, if it be possible. If it be possible. And right now it's possible. Just be peaceful. That's all it is. Y'all better enjoy your last days because uh, y'all don't really want to deal with what's coming in them last days. All right. So that was that. Let's continue. All right. So where were we? We're at uh, Isaiah chapter 41. Go down to verse eight, please. The book of Isaiah chapter 41 and verse eight. The book of Isaiah chapter 41, verse eight. Let's see what it says. But thou, Israel... Art my servant. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> but all of this right here, this is why it is so important to memorize these precepts, baby. It is so important that you get in this book and you read and you use your brain for Bible comprehension. There's a reason why I do all that, you know. There's a reason why. You are to retain this information. When you take notes, which you should be doing right now, you ought to go back and study these things because you will be tested. The Most High will put people in front of you so that you can test your Bible knowledge. I'm telling you, people think that all the tests that we take, you know, that the Most High is going to put us in this situation to whether or not we sin. No, there's other tests that we take. The Father, like, how good you know this book? Put somebody right in front of you. Take them there. Show them the scriptures. Will you be ready when it happens? All right. I'm going to start verse eight again. But thou, Israel, art my servant. Jacob, whom I have chosen. You see, it is a biological choice. You see, the Most High chose these Israelites from nutsack to nutsack. That's how he knows who to choose because he has these one people that he look at and all he has to do is have himself, Yahweh and his angels just scout to see who's keeping the commandments from who's not. How do we know that? Because it's all written in a book of life. It's all written. And when that day comes, if your name is not found in it, you're done. Verse nine, thou whom I have taken from the ends of the earth and called thee from the chief men thereof and said unto thee, thou art my servant. I have chosen thee and not cast thee away. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. There is, he says it again. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So the most I said, for all you blacks, Hispanics, and Native American people, all you have to do is keep my commandments and I got you. Stand in the right hand of righteousness and I got you. That's all you got to do. Stay right here with me and I got you. Do what I tell you to do and I got you. You don't do what I tell you to do and I'm going to kill you. Whew. Okay, now that was that. Family, please go to the book of Ezekiel chapter 20. The book of Ezekiel chapter 20, please. Ezekiel chapter 20. And as you see with these names, is no different. Even my name, my full name is Michael. But it's not actually Michael, it's Mikael. That's my name. <laughs> For those of you who want some trivia, look up what my name means. 
All right, there it is. So Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse five. Let's see what that says, family. Let's see. Watch this. And say unto them, thus saith the Lord, the most high is saying this, thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God in the day when I chose Israel and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt when I lifted up mine hand unto them saying, I am the Lord your God. Stop. So now the Most High is making this clear. He said, first and foremost, when I came to save y'all out of Egypt, slavery round one, I let everybody know those are my children down there. Those are my babies. And how was he able to identify the children of Israel? Because we were all family. <laughs> Uh -huh. We were all family, baby. Just like how we are today. All family. And now the most I like, yeah, I see my babies down there. All of them that came from the nut sack of Jacob. All of them. Those are all mine. <laughs> That's why it says seed. That word children. The term children of Israel. It means something. It is literal. We are God's children. Nobody want to talk about that, though. So now that was that. So now let's go to Second Chronicles, chapter 20. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter 20. And now let's go down to verse seven. Second Chronicles, chapter 20, verse seven. Let's see what it says. Art not thou our God? So we acknowledge that the most high is our God. Who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel? And gave us it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever. The Most High said that Abraham was his friend forever. Why? Because Abraham was a commandment keeper. Now remember how it went. There was a lineage. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 12 sons, and now we're here. It's lineage, a literal lineage, because our forefather Jacob skeeted into all of his wives and created 12 tribes. And now we have our tribes, all of us. And we're still a part of the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Asher, and all the rest of them. Y'all know what time it is. Y'all know what's up. This is not difficult to understand. The hardest part about the Bible is people accepting what it says. Because you've been lied to for so long. Christianity has destroyed our people. Christianity has made people fearless of the most high. People are, they don't, our people do not fear God anymore. They don't. Because Christianity got in there and said, y'all don't got to keep the commandments. Why? What y'all keeping the commandments for? For what? Y'all don't have to. When the Bible says, oh, yes, we do. As a matter of fact, it's a condition to get into the kingdom in the first place. Just read Revelation twenty-two fourteen. 14. The last book, last chapter of the Bible, last page. That very last page tells us that we have to keep the commandments. And I'm not even going to say it. I want you to go look it up. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Get back at me when you do. All right. Second Chronicles chapter seven. I'm going to read it one more time. Art not thou our God? We acknowledge that he's our God. Who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people, Israel? Again, acknowledging that God is our God and we are his children. And gave us it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever now we'll get into that here in a second because of course we got to have what is called a what a precept and seriously you know let's let, let's just continue let's go to isaiah chapter 44 the book of isaiah chapter 44 i, I really hope that y'all are getting something here tonight isaiah chapter 44 we're gonna start at verse one watch this Yet 
Now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. You see that? Jacob and Israel. One and the same. Not spiritual Israel. God said, whom I have chosen. He chose a seed of people. Verse 2. Thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jesurun, whom I have chosen. Seed, 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 who I've chosen from the womb. In order to be an Israelite, you have to be born as one. According to the Bible. That's what it says. I don't care if you get mad. I don't care if you were told differently. You're learning the truth of the Bible. Everyone else outside of Israel. Done. If you're not killed, you'll be a slave. That's how it's going down. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans will be the slave masters. We always were. We were in the beginning. And then what happened? We broke the commandments of God. Every time we break God's commandments as a whole, as a nation, he puts us in slavery. When he told Moses to tell the children of Israel that they will go into slavery on ships, when the father predicted all the way back then, thousands of years ago. That in 1619, Jamestown, Virginia, that the tribe of Judah will have their part in slavery. You got to remember, the Hispanics, they were on ships first. They were. Going to South America and all them other places, we've had those lessons, go back and watch them. But it wasn't until Judah went up for slavery. That, that is when the clock started. 1619, Jamestown, Virginia, in 2019, right here in this country, as a matter of fact, all over the world. And we talked about this the other day. What started happening? They made us stay inside during COVID. Something just magical happened. Black people, Hispanic people, and Native American people started picking up the Bible and reading it. When that happened, the world started to change. The world has not been the same since 2019. And it's getting worse every year that goes by. Their kingdom is falling. It's the greatest thing in the world to watch. And it is. <laughs> Just think about what else is coming. Yeah, Y'all not ready. All right. So now let's go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10, please. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 10. Let's go down to verse five. And tonight may be a little longer than usual. I know I try to have y'all here, you know, at least an hour or a little under. But we got to cover this. We got to cover it. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 5. And I turned myself and came down from the mount and put the fab excuse me, and put the tables in the ark which I had made. And there they be as the Lord commanded me. Watch this, family. Watch this. And the children of Israel took their journey from Baroth of the children of Jacan to Moserah. And Aaron died, so I'm just going here showing you this time frame because remember, from Moses to Aaron, and Aaron died, and there he was buried, and Eleazar, his son, ministered in the priest's office in his steed. Why is that important? Because I wanted to mention the priest. You see, because when it comes to the priest, only the priest can be Israelites. Only the priest can be Israel. 
how can men of the other nations be priests <laughs> when it can only be Israel? It can only be a blood-born Israelite. And again, it's going to show you nobody else can be an Israelite other than the children of Israel that come from the 12 tribes of Jacob. But you can't make this up, family. So now let's go to the book of Deuteronomy. Let's go. Is about all the time I'm talking about? Wait, wait, wait. Go down to verse 15. Something just struck me. Stay in Deuteronomy 10. Go down to verse 15. Something just caught me at, because I'm about to go somewhere. One of my favorites, but this one just caught me. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 15. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them. So again, it's showing that thy fathers. Why is it mentioned in the fathers? Because of the ball sacks. And he chose their seed after them. There it is. There it is, family. God chose our forefathers and the seeds after them. That's us. We are the seed of the 12 tribes. And he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. Above all people. So y'all know where I'm getting ready to go. <laughs> yeah, baby. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6, please. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Mm, yes. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Watch this. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above all people. Above. God said that his Israelites are up here and everybody else is down here. Above all. I'm reading the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you that want to get mad, those of you that want to try to cite racism, I'm reading the Bible. You can't call this racism, nigga. I'm reading the Bible. Just because your pastor lied to you, just because your father, your mother, grandfather, grandmothers, uncles, aunts, friends, doesn't matter. Because they lied to you does not mean that this Bible is not true. They're the liars. Let every man be a liar and every word of the most high be real, baby. We read in the Bible. I don't care where you find yourself on that pole, on that totem pole. You at the bottom, nigga. Too bad. <laughs> Too bad. You see, blacks, Hispanics, and Native American people. I'm going to specifically say the tribe of Judah. We got something to look forward to. Oh, yes, we do. The tribe of Judah, we have the greatest, even over the other 11 tribes, we have the greatest thing to look forward to because the scepter is going to be put into our hand, ours. We're going to hold that scepter, baby, and we ain't never letting it go. Never. <laughs> Black kings all over this place. All over. And ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Not a damn thing. Woo! Okay, so now that was Deuteronomy 7, 6. So as y'all already know, I always do these here in, in succession of each other. So now go to Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. Because you got to get that precept, right? Watch this. For art, excuse me, for thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and thy, excuse me, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. There it is again. It don't matter where we go. The Most High said that black people, Hispanic people, Native American people, we are the greatest people above everybody else on the planet, above everybody else on the planet, above all people. Who does that include? It includes everybody. Everybody. We above everybody on this planet, baby. Above all people. And that's why they're mad. So when you find out just how mad white people are and all other nations, when you find out how mad they are, this is why. Mm -hmm. Because they look at you and you black bastard. 
who the hell said you made you the greatest? He did. He did. <laughs> he did. Can't argue with him, nigga. And I advise you, you don't want to. Okay? So now, let's go to Exodus chapter 19. I love Exodus 19. Watch, <laughs> Watch this. Exodus 19 ties all of these up together. Watch this. Exodus chapter 19. I want you to go down to, go to let's start at verse 5. Exodus 19, verse 5. Let's go there. Watch this. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant. Remember what the fathers, remember how the father said that he kept the covenant with our fathers? Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. That's why I read what I read earlier. <laughs> a kingdom of priests. And an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Not the whole world. Not everybody on the planet. As you just saw, the Most High said, he said, all the earth is mine. All of the earth belongs to me. So I can do whatever the hell I want to do with it. I'll do whatever the hell I want to do with who I want to do it with. Because I'm God and I'll do whatever the hell I please. And most people forgot sight of that. They forgot that God is a God. The God. And he can do whatever he wants to. <laughs> Woo! Now, family, let's go to the book of Leviticus. The book of Leviticus chapter 25. The book of Leviticus chapter 25. Let's go down to verse 42. The book of Leviticus chapter 25, verse 42. Let's see what that says. And now as everybody sees, all of this ties right into each other, right? All of it. Leviticus chapter 25, verse 17. Watch this. For they are my servants, which I brought forth out of the land of Egypt. They shall not be sold as bondmen. They shall not be sold as bondmen. They shall not be sold as bondmen. Now, the Most High went ahead and just put some stank on this right here. He put some stank on this bad boy. He said, you are not allowed to sell my children. Let me just sit back for a second. You know, let's get these shoulders going because uh, y'all know where I'm getting ready to go now, right? Oh, yeah. Y'all know where I'm getting ready to go. Open your Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And let's see if they are in violation. Let's see if they are in violation. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Bondmen, bondmen, remember that. Now, remember the Most High went ahead and told these nations that they are not allowed to sell us. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, by the way that I'm telling you what's going to happen, thou shalt see it no more again. We will not see our land of Jerusalem, Israel, again until the God of Israel says so. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you. So in that case, when it says no man shall buy you, there should be no man that's going to come and save you. Huh. What did they do? They sold us. After the Most High told them they couldn't. <laughs> they made a direct disobedience against the God of Israel. And the Most High told them, don't you sell my babies? What'd they say to God? We're going to sell your babies. And what the Most High said he's going to do? Okay. I'm going to kill you and then I'm going to kill all your babies. I'm going to kill them all. The Most High even told us that we're going to pick one of the babies up by their feet 
and dash it against the stones. You see, y'all have no idea what's coming to this planet. None. None whatsoever. You have no idea. None. 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 And niggas are sitting here playing around. Playing. And God said there's some murder getting ready to, get, getting ready to happen. Murder. Straight up ass murder. It is going to be one of the most gruesome, horrific scenes you ever seen in your life. Just think about that. The Most High said, pick up that baby and throw that baby against the wall. Smash his brains against the wall. Throw it with such a velocity. Now, remember, we are not going to be doing it in this form. We are going to be doing it in our natural form. In our godly bodies. So to take a human and throw a human baby against a wall... There's going to be nothing left of that child. Splat. Splat. And many of you are sitting here looking at me being like, how is this man so cruel in what he's saying? Did we not read earlier that the Most High said what happened to us is going to happen to them? That's why the father said, vengeance is mine. The most I said, y'all not going to be able to do what I'm going to have y'all do to him. <laughs> you want to know what? Family, please, if you would just allow me just, just a little bit more of your time, please, just a little bit more of your time. I want to read. I would like to have, take the opportunity. And I want to read from the book of Amos. I mean, family, if you don't mind, if you, if you don't mind me having this here, I want to read from the book of Amos. Can we please go to chapter nine? I'm going to read through this here really quick, and then we're going we're gonna to close this up. Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready to do this? Y'all ready to see what the finality of all of this is? Oh, let's get it, baby. The book of Amos chapter nine, starting at verse one. I'm going to read the whole thing. We're going to read it straight through. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar. And he said, smite the lintel of the door that the post may shake and cut them in the head, all of them. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away. And he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. This is talking about murder, chasing people down. Chasing them down, there's nobody that's going to be able to get away in them last days. Though they dig into hell. Though they dig into hell, thence shall mine hand take them. Though they climb up to heaven, thence will I bring them down. Do you understand what that's saying? We talked about that earlier. First and foremost, it said that they're trying to dig into hell. Let's talk about them in their little underground bunkers. They can't escape. They cannot escape. Right here, it talks about them going into the heaven. They said they're going to try to go into the heavens where they are now. They're going to try to go to other planets to try to live. We talked about that in the lesson NASA. They know what's coming. There's a whole breakdown of that. They said that they are trying to do that in 2024. No, no, excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Let me rephrase what I just said because I just told a lie. That's not what they said that they were trying to do. That's what they said they are going to do in 2024. Go and look at it. It's called NASA. They know what's coming. It's in our library. Now, let's just see what else they're talking about. Now, watch this because y'all going to love this one. And though they hide themselves in top of Mount Carmel, Mount Carmel, where is that? That is still right here to this very, very day. Mount Carmel is still there. It is in northwestern Israel. That's why the Most High gave us these locations so that we can look it up on the map and see exactly where it's taking place. In northwestern Israel, it is right there by the water. Right by the water. Carmel is right by the water. And now we got to see why. Watch this. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, thence will I command the serpent and he shall bite them. So when y'all are trying to figure out what are these things that they're seeing in the water? What are these big animals? Why are they sending nukes in the ocean? Because there are God's creatures in the ocean. They are called serpents. You have Leviathan and Lord knows what else he has down there. Lord knows. 
But the father told us, it's no secret. He said that my animals are down there. And for all these people that try to make their little underground bunkers, we talked about that too. We have that lesson. It's in the Leviathan lesson. It's in the library. Go look at it. I actually show the houses that they have under sea. And the most high said, I'm going to go down there and go get them niggas. Don't worry about that. I'm going to kill them. I'm going to get them and I'm going to kill them. I'm going to get them and I'm going to kill them. I'm going to get them and I'm going to kill them. I'm going to get them and I'm going to kill them. The most high has been saying this all throughout these scriptures. All throughout. There's nowhere they can run and there is nowhere they can hide. But it is a high speed chase. And the most ass, the most ass is going to get kicked. <laughs> The most ass it is going to get kicked, killed, slaughtered, eradicated all over this planet. All praises to the God of Israel. Watch this. Let's continue. Verse four. And though they go into captivity before their enemies, thence will I command the sword and it shall slay them. And I will set mine eyes upon them for evil and not for good. And the Lord of hosts is he that toucheth the land and it shall melt and all that dwell therein shall mourn and it shall rise up holy like a flood and shall be drowned as as by the flood of Egypt. So the most high is letting everybody know when he returns, he's destroying things. Remember, he already told us in the scriptures, he said that my voice is going to melt the mountains. It's going to drop everything. That voice, people are not understanding that voice of the most high is going to cause this earth to quake. All of these buildings and everything is going to shake. The Most High said that he's moving mountains out of their place. But now you may ask yourself, where will we be? We're going to be in chariots. <laughs> Flying away. Why all these things are taking place. All of the destruction that's coming down. Now you see how many people die in earthquakes. And that just is, that's just in one section. Imagine the entire world being shaken and shifted. This is why the Father said he's going to be shifting things. You know when you get a, a, a sifter and whatever? That's the earth. That's the earth. That's literal what the Most High is talking about. He is going to shake this bitch. All of them buildings, all of those high rises. <laughs> Esau, they created their own destruction. They're stupid. Do, do y'all remember what happened during 9-11? <laughs> it's going to be like that over the entire world. The whole world. Verse six, it is he that buildeth his stories in the heaven and have founded his troop in the earth. He that calleth for the waters of the sea and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. The Lord is his name. You see that the most high like nigga, you better put some respect on my name. Wait, wait, where do y'all think we get that from? Where do y'all think we get that from? Nigga, put some respect on my name and the most high. It's like nigga, put some respect on my name. We're just like our daddy. Verse 7. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Do you see what the Most High is saying here? Why is he saying this? Because he told us, he said, I'll put a difference between Egypt, the Ethiopians, and Israel. He said, I'll put a difference between the children of Ham and the children of Shem. But when you look at the children of Ham, you know exactly how they, you know who they are, what kind of black asses. You know exactly who they are. When you talk about Africans, you know a damn African when you see one. You know them niggas. You look at us. We ain't no damn African. Look, I ain't no, I'm not an African. Look at me. I'm not an African. And neither are you. But there's some Africans that look like me though. But even with that, you can tell by our cheekbones and brow structure. The most I said, I put a difference between y'all. When the world looks at you, they know when they're looking at an Israelite. And that's what the father is saying. Let's continue. Oh, children of Israel, saith the Lord, have not I brought up Israel out of the land of Egypt and the Philistines from Kaphtor 
and the Syrians from Kiri. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God are upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. Why? Because two-thirds will be destroyed and one-third won't. One-third won't be destroyed. Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. It's all right here in the scriptures. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. <laughs> Most High, say that one more time. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. In that day, in that day, in that day, Will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old that they may possess the remnant of Edom. Wow. The remnant they shall possess the remnant of Edom. Why will they possess the remnant of Edom family? Well, we got to take a detour real quick. I want you to go to Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 21. The book of Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 21. And let's see exactly what it says. Why? 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 Let's see. Isaiah chapter 14 verse. As a matter of fact, start at verse 1. No, no, go to verse 1. Go to verse 1, verse 1, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. We just read that, right? Because he said he will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob. Right. OK. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. We just read that. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. We just read that. Why? And the people shall take them and bring them to their place and the house of Jacob. Excuse me. And the house of Israel, the house of Israel, because that's all 12 tribes shall possess them in the land of of the Lord for servants and handmaids and they shall take them captives whose captives they were and they shall rule over their oppressors. <laughs> Done. Done. And as we all know, Esau will serve slavery for 1,000 years and then, just like their daddy, they are eradicated off the earth completely. Gone. Gone. On. I didn't say it. The Bible said it. Okay. So now, now go down to verse 21, please. We're going to see if this correlates with anything that the book of Obadiah said. Let's just see. Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. But who is that talking about? It's talking about Esau. We just read that, Nobadiah. <laughs> yes, indeed. Now let's go back to Amos chapter 9. I believe we're at verse 11, right? I believe we're at. Yep, 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 yep. Verse 11. Watch this. We read it one more time. In that day, so this is talking about a specific time. Will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as the days of old. So now I got to stop here for a second because I need to introduce y'all to something. Do you know that there is a certain phone number that you can call? When there is an emergency, when there is trouble, when something is not going right, there's this number called 911. When things just are not going your way. Where do y'all think they got 911 from? This is a distress call. <laughs> <laughs> Mystery Saul, baby. Let's read that one more time. In that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the days of old. Meaning that we will be taken back over everything. So now, again, that word tabernacle, what does that mean? 
What does the word tabernacle mean? So let's go ahead and get what that word means here. Tabernacle, let's just see. Tabernacle, Hebrew, Mishkan. In Jewish history, the portable sanctuary constructed by Moses as a place of worship for the Hebrew tribes during the period of wandering that preceded their arrival in the promised land. So what was the tabernacle made for in the first place? It says that it's pretty much a mobile place. So the, the, the tabernacle, it, it represented something, something that's able to move. <laughs> The tabernacle is you. Us portable, movable houses of God. Us. We're the tabernacle. Yep. Let's continue. <laughs> Verse 12. That they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen which are called by my name saith the lord that doeth this now because most people already know when it comes to christianity oh that's old testament go to our uh, revelation chapter 13 please you know we have to do this i know it may seem redundant but we have to do it revelation chapter 13 and go to verse 9 let's see what this says if any man have an ear let him hear he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Who led the black people into captivity? Who led Hispanics and Native Americans into captivity? It's white people. It's Africans. It's the entire world. It's Ishmaelites who are the Arabs. This is who it is, family. Every nation had their hand in our slavery. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And we all know that the saints are Israel. Do you see how you can't get around this? It doesn't matter where you go. You can't get around this family because this is what it is. That was Amos chapter 9 verse 13. That's the precept to that. So now let's go ahead. Oh, excuse me. That was uh, 12. Let's go ahead and read verse 13 now. Watch this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, because we are the slaves that went into captivity. We are. And they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. Because remember, this is why I read all of Obadiah. Because remember, in Obadiah, it was dropping everything. The father said, I'm going to bring all of that down. I am going to destroy their cities. But the Most High said, it's going to be us to build them back up. Watch this. I'm going to read 14 again. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them so I need y'all to understand what this is talking about all of this industrial crap that these Edomites made all these beautiful you know what they love to call beautiful buildings and their foliage and all that stuff the most I said I'm destroying all of that I'm taking the earth back to what it was. There will be one beautiful kingdom and it will be ours. It will be New Jerusalem. The most beautiful place on earth and it's ours. We'll have it. We'll have the skyscrapers. We'll have the things that, the things that our, our brains can't even imagine what we are going to see in that day. Verse 15 and I will plant them upon their land because we're going back to Jerusalem. We're going back to Israel and they shall no more be pulled out of their land, which I have given to them, saith the Lord thy God. That is our end family. That is our finality. Those of us that remain righteous, those of us that remain faithful to the most high. He said that we are blacks, Hispanics and Native Americans, that we will inherit the kingdom of God. It will belong to us. Everybody else, first and foremost, 
Moab and Ammon will never see the congregation of the Lord. They are going to be eradicated immediately. They will never see it. Then you have Esau, who the Most High said, nah, y'all are going to stay around for a bit because y'all got hell to pay for 1,000 years. And then after that 1,000 years is up, then they are eradicated. Everyone else that remains from the nations will be our slaves. That's the finality. That's what the Bible says. And for any person that has an issue with it, take it up with him. Take it up with the father because your beef is not with me. Okay. All I'm doing is reading what it says. I am contributing to the truth by bringing out the truth and making sure that I bring along precepts. This entire lesson was precept after precept after precept after precept after precept. Every last one. So there is no doubt to anybody. There shouldn't be. And if you do, you are an idiot. It means, first and foremost, if you are unable to break this down and have the understanding of this, it means that the father did not wake you up. Either you weren't awakened yet or you're never going to be. There are those of us that understand this perfectly. We get it. The the question is, do you? Family, that's it. I love y'all and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Sabbath. But family, make sure you're studying, memorizing. Remember, bury this word in your heart. That's a commandment, okay? Family, you beautiful black, Hispanic, and Native American people. Y'all are so beautiful and so gorgeous. Get your beautiful asses out of here. Get out of here.